In this special edition of Whiteboard Wednesday, I want to share with you something I'm really excited about. It's an epiphany that I had reading a radio antenna book, and it has led me to a deeper understanding of exactly what we need in PMF therapy. So hopefully that got your attention. Now I want to read to you the exact passage that I read and it's going to take a little explaining to help you to see why it was an epiphany for me. And it's going to lead us down the road of biomagnetism, magnetobiology, and magnetoreception as well as how it all applies to PMF therapy. So let me just read to you this passage. Whatever is said about transmission applies equally to reception. This is known as reciprocity. And antenna's characteristics are the same on transmission and reception. Light bulb went off. Now, now I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but it was really exciting for me because, so this little reciprocity theorem, which states an antenna theory, when you know the radiation pattern of the broadcasting mode of an antenna, then you automatically know the radiation pattern of the receiving mode. So, let me just kind of break this down as you look with a little tuning fork analogy. So when I, try, when I strike a tuning fork, and then a nearby tuning fork, will, if it's the same geometry, will resonate. Now, instead of, so this, this, in this case, the tuning fork is the transmitting antenna, metaphorically. Now, I could take the other tuning fork, and this can be the receiving tuning fork, and strike the other tuning fork, and then this one will start to ring. So, it, both the transmitting and receiving vibrational modes are identical. Now, I know that doesn't sound exactly that exciting, but, but here's how it applies to PMF therapy. Here's the big aha that I got. Because there's all this debate as far as what frequency to use for PMF, what intensities, on and on and on, to me the reciprocity, the, the answer is staring us in the face of the reciprocity theorem. Meaning, if we can just accurately measure the biomagnetic fields of the body, and look at the frequencies of those biomagnetic fields, then we know what frequencies to give the body because the frequencies that it broadcasts are going to be the same frequencies that it receives. I don't know, nobody is talking about this in PMF therapy. And what's really surprising is that we've known some of these frequencies that the biomagnetic field of the body radiates now for about, let's see, 1972, almost 50 years when Dr. Zimmerman did the first um, squid magnetometer reading of the human body using Reiki healers and he was able to map out the frequencies. So before we talk a little more in detail about biomagnetism, I want to first describe the field that it's a part of which is bioelectromagnetism. And bioelectromagnetism is basically the study of all the electric, magnetic, and electromagnetic fields of the human body. And as I've talked about in other videos, Electric fields, magnetic fields, and then light or electromagnetic waves are qualitatively very different kinds of energy, even though they're all related by Maxwell's equations. So let's start with the first subdivision of bioelectromagnetism, which is bioelectricity. And this deals with static charges or currents or charges in motion. Now there are a couple of really big discoveries in the 1920s related to bioelectricity in the human body. The first was the discovery of the EKG, where William Eindhoven invented the EKG, which of course, as we all know, measures the heart electricity, and it plots it on a graph, so we can see it in an electrocardiogram. Now, this was a big discovery at the time, the fact that these, these bioelectric fields in the body could actually be measured. It was no longer pseudoscience of, of like mesmerism or some of these sort of controversial figures of the time with biomagnetism. This was science tangibly measuring the electric currents in the, in the heart, in the case of EKG, and then Hans Berger developed something similar for the brain with the EEG, or electroencephalogram. And, and that was in the 1920s. I mean, so we, again, this is nothing new. Now, the second division I'm just gonna call biophotons, or this is like bioelectromagnetic waves. Now, again, in the 1920s, Alexander Gerswich discovered what he called mitogenic radiation, where he could see when cells divided, the DNA were radiating little ultraviolet frequency waves, and then he put something between the cells that blocked, that blocked UV radiation, and he saw that the cell, the cell division stopped. 
So this was huge. Our body is using photons to communicate. And even to this day, shockingly, this is not talked about much. The fact that we have biophotons, which the cells communicate, this is huge. And, and modern medicine is still using drugs and Newtonian type of physics for understanding the human body. Now, Fritz Pop is kind of more of a modern pioneer of biophoton research. And there's a lot to say about biophotons that maybe I'll do in another video, but not today. What I really want to focus on today is biomagnetism. And again, shocking as it sounds, this is nothing new. This has again been known for now almost 60 years. So Ball and McPhee in 1963 were the first to detect the magnetic field of the heart. And what they did is they used a million windings over around a ferrous core, which is an incredibly sensitive magnetic field detector, right? And they put a lot of meticulous labor and work just to detect the heart's magnetic field. But they did it. They detected the magnetic field of the heart outside of the body. And now this was a monumental event. And I don't know why it didn't get any press because when the magnetic field of the heart was detected by science in 1963, this was the first time that we can understand the, the human body beyond the boundary of the skin. Meaning we don't end at our skin. We keep extending out into space and we're gonna go through Zimmerman's studies here in a minute, but he found the magnetic field of the body was detectable 15 feet away. But here's a principle from physics. The electromagnetic force is infinite in range. There is no end to how far the field will go. Meaning you, me, and everybody here on earth, our fields are extending out to infinity and this is science. And what was once thought as new age or pseudoscience is now science. And again, hardly anybody is talking about this in the scientific community. They just don't want to acknowledge that we're more than just the physical body. And to give you an example of the near infinite range of the electromagnetic force, the Pioneer 10, which was launched in 1972, interestingly, the same year that Zimmerman did the studies with the squid magnetometer on the human field. But in 2003, when the, when the Pioneer 10 was about 7.8 billion miles from Earth, it transmitted with an eight watt transmitter, a signal back to the Earth. This is the last signal, but it was received 7.8 billion miles away. So what this illustrates is that because the human body is also electromagnetic in nature, like the Pioneer 10, our field is going out perhaps 8 billion miles if you have a sensitive enough antenna to receive it. Before we move on, I just want to mention that the whole key to the Pioneer 10 being able to transmit a signal 7.6 billion miles is resonance. And I did a whole video on resonance and I'll put a link at the end of this video. So let's now take a closer look at biomagnetism. And here's the definition, simply. Biomagnetism is the study of the production of external magnetic fields by biological organisms. That is to say, like we mentioned, it's measuring the magnetic fields that living organisms like the human body emits going out, the energy going out, like we said, even to infinity. Now, magnetobiology is the energy coming in. So magnetobiology is when external magnetic fields are applied to biological organisms, and these can be magnetic fields from the surrounding environment or devices like PMF devices. So magnetobiology is the energy coming in. So to illustrate the principle of biomagnetism and magnetobiology and how their reciprocals or and how the reciprocity theorem applies, let's just take a couple simple examples. Well, they're not so simple, but I'm gonna to try to simplify them. So these two images here represent biomagnetism and magnetobiology. So over here, we're measuring the magnetic fields coming from the brain and over here, we're applying magnetic fields to the brain. Now, in both cases, the kind of center of it all is going to be currents within the brain. So over here, in J is just a little subscript in physics for current. It's a current density. So over here, the brain and all the neuron nerve activity in the brain has all these electrical impulses. And we know from Ampere's law that electrical currents produce a magnetic field. So the net current in the brain, the net vector, if you kind of take all the vector sums of all the currents, is going to create an external magnetic field that a squid magnetometer can detect. Now over here, we're doing the opposite. We're taking an external magnetic field, like say a PMF device, or transcranial magnetic stimulation, and we're applying a magnetic field to the brain. 
And so the changing magnetic field is going to induce a current by Faraday's law. So again, we're going to end up with a little J of P down here. So again, this is just a current density. So basically the PMF or the external magnetic field that's changing with time is going to induce currents in the brain, healing currents in the brain to help with healing and regeneration. So by the reciprocity theorem, we can use biomagnetism to determine the frequencies and energies that are emitted from the body, like a transmitting antenna. And then we can use magnetobiology to apply the same type of healing frequencies and energies to the body. So again, the frequencies something emits is the frequencies it absorbs. So in concluding this video, I want to look at Dr. Zimmerman's study where he used Reiki healers and then Seto's study where he used Qigong masters to really show and illustrate the power of this reciprocity theorem to really understand what are the most healing energies to use for the human body, especially related to PMF therapy. So now I want to go through a couple things. First, I want to go through frequency windows of specificity. So this is magnetobiology. Magnetobiology has done some really good research to determine the resonant frequencies and the frequencies that different tissues and cells respond to. You know, Addy and Bowen, Siskin and Walker, um, Dr. Goodwin, the, the NASA study, and, and many others. And I want to show you this image here. I'm going to put it on the screen so you can just take a kind of a quick look at it. But this summarizes many years of research in PMF therapy, of course, which is magnetobiology, to determine like what are the best frequencies to apply the human body. Then with the reciprocity theorem, we can confirm this by looking to see what biomagnetism has shown to be the frequencies that are emitting from the body. So again, in, in what you'll see is they do match. So let's first look at the Zimmerman study. And Dr. Z Dr. James Zimmerman used therapeutic touch practitioners like Reiki healers and again, use that very sensitive squid magnetometer. And what he found, and this is a very crude drawing here, I'm gonna put a, a better drawing on the screen, is that the Reiki healers were kind of scanning a whole range of frequencies. So again, they were, they were measuring the frequencies coming out of their hands. And it was very interesting that they were scanning between zero to 30 hertz mainly, but there was a peak at seven to eight hertz, which is right in the Schumann resonance. And and you could read my book and I got several videos on the body-mind-earth connection. I really want to focus here mainly on biomagnetism and magnetobiology. Now, Seto in Japan confirmed this with Qigong masters, yoga practitioners, and, and meditators. And what he found was, and actually he was able to, to quantify how strong the fields were, where Zimmerman could not do that. And he found that the Qigong masters and the, and the meditators were emitting energies up to a thousand times stronger than the average person's heart magnetic field. So it's incredible how much energy some of these, these, these masters can harness. And also interesting, also with the Reiki healers, they noticed that they're, I mean, as they're transferring the energy to the, to the patient, that their hands start to tingle and they can feel the warmth and the energy. And when I read this, I was like, oh, of course, reciprocity. When we use PMF therapy on people, they feel tingling and warmth. So it's going both ways. The practitioners applying the fields feel warmth and tingling. And when you lay on a PMF mat, you feel the warmth and tingling because that's again, the improved circulation. So, so it's really interesting to see all the applications of this reciprocity theorem from antenna theory, even just within PMF. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. I have many more videos coming. Leave some comments. I'd like to know what you think and, and tell me if there's any other videos that you'd like to see in the realm of PMF therapy. So thanks again and have a great rest of your day.